This is a very important video you must watch tomorrow. Today, Fed Powell gave, gave the green light, and what do we see? Apple making new all-time highs. And could this article that we shared earlier this morning, the fear of missing out, could spark a parabolic melt-up? Are we in the middle of this parabolic melt-up right now? Because as we can see, the Qs, the NASDAQ making new all-time high. The SPY, the SP500 making new all-time highs up 1% on the session. Then we come over and look at Tesla. We know Tesla has been squeezed in the shorts. Today, Tesla was up a little bit more, but now it appears Tesla is closing with a candle of indecision, basically a spinning top type of candle. And we zoom out Tesla's chart, look over here to the left. This is exactly where we said there could be a little bit of problems up ahead. Now, if you guys watched this morning's analysis video, remember this blue mice development area we drew out? I'm gonna show you guys how exactly you could have entered the market right near the bottom of that candle. So you wanna make sure you watch until the end of this video. But the question I ask you guys, is this a little too far too fast? Is everything really as good as the picture they're painting? Because right now we see Intuit to lay off 1800 employees amid location shuffle and AI investment. And a lot of people have been warning about this for quite some time that AI is gonna go ahead and take a lot of jobs. And will that be good for the overall economy? Now we look at how the indices fared out there. The Dow was up 429 points. The NASDAQ was up 218 points. S&P 500 up 56 points. The Russell 2000 was up $1.96. I don't think this Russell is really correct though because if I look over here at the futures markets, the Russell was up 21 points. So I think that could be a little bit misleading, but something that we did see today, we haven't seen in quite a while. Look at advancing issues versus declining. Advancing issues way outweigh declining issues. This is something we've, we've actually been seeing for quite some time where we've seen a lot more declining issues than what we've been seeing with advancing issues. Now we come over and look at the sectors. Every sector was in the green. This was a broad-based rally today. And a lot of that had to do with Jay Powell, which we're gonna talk about here in a moment. But technology led the way, followed by basic materials, utilities, industrial, everything was just in the green. All you had to do was pick a stock, throw a dart, put some money at it, and you should have made money today. Now we look at this article right here. Apple expects 10% rise in new iPhone shipments on hopes of AI driven upgrade cycle. So again, we're hearing the word AI, 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 and AI most certainly helped out Apple's stock today where we saw Apple was up $4.20, up 1.84%. And yes, this is another new all time high for Apple stock. Now let's talk about what Jay Powell did today. Jay Powell basically said during his testimony, Fed can cut rates before inflation hits 2%. So what does the market do? The market says, you know what? The Fed is getting ready to cut rates. We're gonna rally to the moon. And that's exactly what unfolded. We look at the Fed watch tool. They're still pricing in a rate cut out here in September. And the next one coming in in December. We look at the fear and greed index. We we're actually able to get out of neutral territory today. The pendulum swung back into greedy territory. And we'll see how long we can stay in greedy territory. Keep in mind, tomorrow is gonna to be very important because tomorrow, what do we have? We have the CPI data coming out, or should I say the CP lie? And I got a funny feeling, this is gonna come in a lot better than what is expected. And we look at some of the indices across the board. We look at the NASDAQ, for instance, and we gotta ask ourselves: is this an exhaustion type of move? If we look, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six. This is day number seven up consecutively. And at some point, we are gonna get a pullback in the market. Is it going to be tomorrow? We've seen before where the market has basically put in a short-term top during CPI. So if that CPI data comes in better than expected, don't be surprised if the NASDAQ and S&P come rallying all the way up only for that news to be sold. You always heard, you probably heard the old adage, buy the rumor, sell the news. We look out here on the four hour chart, MACD indicator going to the upside. We look on the one hour chart, just kind of flat lined out here in the last candle. I don't like the wick that we see on the hourly chart. Out here on the 30 minute chart, what do we do today? Well, we never came down into the gap, but if you're an aggressive trader, and this is one of the trades that we talked about in this morning's video, that was if we start getting back below all time highs, which we did right here, we could look to target value area high, we could look to target the point of control. Well, that would have only been good for target number one, then a break even, and then it was up, up, up and away for the remainder of the day. Now we come over here and we look at the NASDAQ, you can see we made another high, basically closing with a spinning top type of candle. Then as we come over and we look at the daily charts, notice we came right into the minus development area, right? Here is one where we just barely missed it, came back up. 
We came back, we overshot it a little bit, and then we rallied back up. And from this point on, there was no looking back. You could not stop the market rally. It just said we're going higher, 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 and a little bit higher to go. Now, when we look at the volume profile levels, keep in mind, we are closing above value area high. So you know what my routine is going to be for tonight on live stream. We have value area high coming at 20,845.50. The point of control is going to be all the way down here at 20,761.00. And value area low coming at 20,695.50. Now, you can see we kind of had this, you know, the undeveloped um, area of the volume profile. Not a lot of volume was conducted there. I do suspect we break value area high, and then we gotta be on the lookout as we come to this area, do we get a rejection back up and then ultimately come back lower? Now, if we come over and we look at this trade from this morning, all right, I wanna make everybody aware, Apex 7 a massive 80% sale off all their valuation accounts, passing as little as one day, and you can also get a 150K account for only $40. You get a 250K account for only $40, and you get a 300K account for only $40. So if you want to take advantage of this offer, use the link in the description box down below and use the promo code Mike at checkout. Now, if we come over and we look at this trade from this morning, all right, let's talk about what really made this up. This was the minus development area that we drew out in this morning's analysis video. In case you guys are unaware, I dropped these videos each day before the stock market opens. But essentially, I said, watch out. This could be an area. If we cannot break through here, then we're not going to probably come down towards value area high and rotate through the overnight volume profile levels. Now, let's talk about how we could have got in with very little risk on this trade. And for this, I went ahead and I'm going to bring up book map. Now, if you want to get more familiar with book map, there's a link in the description box down below, but I want you guys to pay attention right here where you see this, this thick line right here. I kind of dulled down the colors a little bit, but this is a resting limit order. There is a big buyer down there. Now, one of the things I like to do is when you start to see this quick move and the bubbles start to get smaller and smaller, as soon as we start getting back above it, I like to go ahead and take a pop back up. But if you didn't take the, the shot right here, then over here, you can see we had a little bit larger red bubble. And when we start to get back above it, and we're going to go ahead and call this, you know, 56, 40. 0.75, then guess what? I could have put my stop loss right down below here, roughly one point away, four ticks away. And then when we go back and we look, look at the reward to risk ratio. You could have risked four ticks on this trade. Then you could have got multiples of that type of trade. And that's what I like to do. I like to put the risk to reward in my favor. Now, does that guarantee every trade is going to work out? No, but when you have a positive reward to risk ratio, then guess what? All you have to do is catch a couple of these trades and you don't even have to get the whole entire move from the day. You know, only even if you would have only got all the way back up here towards the high, if you measure from here down towards here, that is almost nine S&P points risking one. So you could risk one point to potentially make nine. That's one of the ways I like playing these volume profile levels. Now we come over and look at the SPY today, big strong candle on the way up and similar to the NASDAQ, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days up in a row. MACD indicator is still across to the upside. I have no levels up above. The market has never been this high, but I can guarantee you one person that is smiling, and that would be Mr. Tom Lee. We look out here on the hourly chart. We have a little bit of a wick, but not a whole lot on that candle. Last 30 minute candle, very widespread. And I wanna pay very close attention because now we have two days with back-to-back -back gaps that have not been filled. If indeed we gap up tomorrow morning on the CPI news, then I will be actively, aggressively looking for that gap to potentially get filled. As we come over and look at the futures markets, notice we have value area high from the developing weekly profile all the way down here. And there, I really don't see a chance where we're going to make it all the way down here testing last week's value area high. So we're probably going to go ahead and kick that can down the road. And I probably won't look at that target anymore until next week sometime. Now, if we do start to get a sell-off, we want to pay attention to where is some of the volume. And you can see really where this distribution area is of the weekly profile is really where this volume comes into play. So if we start to get a very negative reaction from the CPI data tomorrow, this is going to be an area I most certainly want to focus on. Now, as we come over and look at the daily profiles, look how straight up this is. A little bit too far, too fast. We have value area high that we're closing way above. So what's the MO for tonight? If you said a retest of value area high, Go ahead and pat yourself on the back. We have value area high coming at 56.71.25. The point of control will be down here at 56.44.25 and value area low will come in at 56.31.25. Now, one thing to note, pay attention. This is gonna be one of the areas I am gonna be watching. This is a minus development area within the volume profile and that's gonna come in somewhere from about 56.55 to about 56.54. Now, the first time we come into this area, I would suspect 
we get some type of reaction out of it, then we'll see if we come back down. Now, it could be a case where we just reject off that level and we go all the way back up, potentially making new all-time highs. But again, we wanna use volume profile to basically quantify, should we be long or should we be short the market at any given time? And it's very simple. If indeed we come below value area high and then we start coming back up, well, guess what? I'm not gonna be looking for the minus development area. I'm not gonna be looking for the point of control or even value area low. It's gonna be very simple. If we break value area high and we come back up, I need to be on the buy side of the trade or just simply sit on my hands and wait for the trade that I'm looking for to finally develop. Now, if you guys wanna see more in depth how I use Bookmap, go ahead and watch this video right here.